We're going to be inserting a nasogastric tube today. There are a few reasons why a patient may need a nasogastric tube. One is that they may need suction. Perhaps they have intractable vomiting. Another reason that they may need it is to hook them to suction because they need bowel rest. Perhaps they've had a bowel resection or they've got an ileus or an obstruction. If a patient has had a stroke or a TIA, they may have some problems swallowing and they may be aspirating what they're eating and drinking. So we're gonna put a nasogastric tube down. This one won't be hooked to suction. The reason that we're putting this tube down is so that we can give the patient feedings and medications and bypass the lungs completely so they don't aspirate. And that's gonna be the situation here for this demonstration. This patient came in, had a small stroke. They are thinking that perhaps the patient is aspirating. So they're gonna do a swallow study tomorrow and confirm whether or not he is. But until then, they wanna go ahead and put a uh, nasogastric tube down the patient to give him his feedings and his medications. Okay, the supplies that you're gonna need for emesis basin, a pair of clean gloves, a drape to put down across your patient's chest so that we can protect his gown in case he does get nauseous and gag or vomit, a measuring tape to measure after the tube has been inserted, tape, lubricating jelly, an alcohol wipe, our nasogastric tube, a safety pin, a cap to go on the end of our tube, a cup of water or a cup of ice, and a straw. Your stethoscope needs some litmus paper. And you're also going to need a pen light. The other items that you're going to need are your isolation gown and a face mask that offers protection for your mouth and your eyes. You have to have an order for insertion of a NG tube. So you've checked your order, you make sure you have it, and you also make sure it made sense for your patient. You come into your patient's room and you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Becky and I'm gonna be your nurse today. Could I take a look at your armband? Could you tell me your name and date of birth? And he does and it matches exactly with this armband. Do you have any allergies? No? Okay. Your physician has ordered for you to have a nasogastric tube. It's going to enable us to give you feedings and medications without risk of breathing it into your lungs. It's a fairly quick procedure. It may be a little bit uncomfortable. You may gag. I'm gonna have an emesis basin for you in case you do. And we're gonna to work together. We're going to get this done very, very quickly. I'm going to position my patient in high Fowler's or 90 degrees because if he does gag or vomit, I don't want him to breathe that in. And I'm gonna raise the bed to a comfortable working height for myself. Put down the side rail. Now I need to assess my patient's nares and see which one may be more patent. Okay, the right side looks more patent. I am gonna ask my patient if he's got a deviated septum, if he has ever had nasal surgeries or if he's ever broken his nose. He tells me he has not. I also wanted to make sure and assess my patient for contraindications. And those include gastric bypass, lap banding, any problems with their liver, that includes alcoholism or bleeding disorders. If I were to nick something on the way in, they'd be at increased risk to bleed. Esophageal varices are another contraindication because if we were to nick those, that could cause the patient to bleed as well. Take out my alcohol prep and I'm gonna clean my table on the top and on the side. This is where I'm gonna put my tape. I want one piece to be about three inches long. I'm going to tear it right down the center, leaving a little bit untorn. We call this a uh, pants because it kind of looks like a pair of pants. That's the piece that's going to attach it to his nose. And if my patient's skin is very oily, I can use a alcohol prep and clean that area. I need a piece that's about an inch and a half long and one more that's about that long. I'm going to open up my nasogastric tube packaging. Take my lubricating jelly, open that up, put it on my wrapper, take my tube and open up my cap and put the cap in the end. This is a vent. You don't want to put the cap in the vent. You want to put it here at the end of the clear tube. That's the NG tube itself. Measure using the tube, not my tape measure, to measure from the tip of the nose to the tip of the earlobe. I'm going to lower your gown, okay? Of course, you've provided privacy for this. To the tip of the xiphoid process. I'm going to hold on to that and I'm gonna mark it with a piece of tape. That should be the level of the stomach. When I get to this tape, 
I'll stop inserting. I've donned my personal protective equipment. I'm not going to put on the face mask because it's too difficult for you to hear me on the video. You're going to put your gloves on over your gown. If your patient's not allowed to have something to drink, you could use ice chips if that's allowed. And if that's not allowed, then you could just ask them to swallow. I've handed the patient the cup. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to begin inserting the tube. And at a certain point, I'm going to ask you to put your chin to your chest and swallow, swallow, swallow. Your swallowing will help facilitate that tube right down into your stomach. I'm going to put my emesis basin here in case my patient needs it. And I'm going to drape his chest just in case. Lubricate my tube approximately two inches and hold my patient's forehead so that he maintains a straight line. I'm going to insert the tube and as soon as I feel resistance, I'm not going to tell my patient that, but I am going to tell him this is the point where I need you to go ahead and put your chin to your chest and swallow, swallow, swallow. I continue to push this in. He's swallowing. If he at any time starts to cough or needs to take a breath, pause because I don't want to continue to advance the tube. It would go into his lungs potentially. Give him a chance to recover. Okay, you ready? And swallow, swallow, swallow. And I'm going to go all the way until I meet my tape. And I've met my tape. Now, I don't want to let this go. I'm going to hold it down here to get the piece of tape that will secure it to his nose. The top part, I'm going to put on the bridge of the nose. I'm going to take one piece and stick it over here on his cheek so it's out of my way. And keeping the tube straight coming out of the nose, I don't want to have it high up. It can cause a lot of irritation to that nair. Wrap my tape just around the bottom of the tube. I'm not going to bring it back up to his nose. Now I'm going to get my second piece and just wrap that around the tube itself. And then I want to make sure that the tape is not occluding his nostril. Before we can access this tube or use it for any purpose, we need to verify placement, verify that it's in the stomach. You're going to check and see what the policy is for verifying placement at that institution. For some institutions, it's checking air bolus and let our patient know that we're going to lower their gown. We're going to listen with our stethoscope approximately three inches below the xiphoid process and a little bit to the left. That's the epigastric region. Move this drape over here just in case something were to come out of this tube. Anytime I take this cap off, I must clamp this tubing and that just means pinching it. I'm going to take off the cap, pull my plunger back to the 30, put it right into the top of the tube. I'm going to set that down for a minute so I can get my stethoscope on. I'm going to place the diaphragm over the epigastric region and then quickly push the plunger in. And I heard the whoosh. Kink my tubing to take off my piston syringe and I'll replace the cap. I'm going to put my final piece of tape here near the end of the tube, take my safety pin and put it through the tape, secure it to his gown above the stomach. Other institutions may use x-ray confirmation as their method of confirming placement of an NG tube. There's a few steps involved with that. The first one is going to be measuring the tube using a measuring tape, and you're going to measure from the point that the tube exits the nose all the way to the end of the clear tube itself. Okay? You're going to measure in centimeters. All the way to the end of the clear tube, and that's 95 centimeters. Secure the tube itself to the patient's gown. Send the patient down for x-ray. When the patient returns from x-ray, remeasure the tube to, just to make sure that it didn't move while he was being transported. And again, it is 95 centimeters. It hasn't moved. This tube is in and that he's gone for an x-ray. I don't know that it's correctly placed in the stomach. I need to go and read the x-ray report and I'm going to read that. And yes, I saw on the report that the distal end of the tube was located in the stomach. Now it's okay for me to go ahead and use this tube. Other institutions verify placement of NG tube by gastric pH. You're going to have your litmus paper. 
make sure that you're putting it on another piece of paper because we're going to be putting a few drops of stomach contents on that and you don't want that to get on our table. So again, I've got my drape here because I may drip. I'm going to take the cap off. So before I do that, I need to kink my tubing, take off my cap. I'm going to put my piston syringe on the end of the tube and notice that I've got the plunger all the way down because I need to withdraw five to 10 milliliters of gastric contents. Before I can do that, I have to let go of the tubing so that I can pull this back. And I'm going to pull back between five to 10 milliliters. Before I take it off, I have to kink my tubing again. Now I'm going to come over to my litmus paper and just put a few drops. I'm going to see what number this gives me. It must be less than 5.5 for me to have confirmation that this tube is in the stomach. If it's greater than 5.5, it could be below the stomach or it could be in the lungs. Now granted, this patient would probably be coughing a great deal if it were in the lungs, but if you have a patient who's not alert, they may not have a good cough reflex and you could be in the lungs. So it's important to verify that the pH is less than 5.5. Now I still have a little bit of stomach contents in this syringe I want to go ahead and return that to my patient because it contains important electrolytes. Put it back on, unkink my tubing, and gently instill, kink the tube and take off the syringe. Now visualize stomach contents in this tubing. I don't want the tubing to clog, so I'm going to go ahead and flush that with 30 milliliters of room temperature water. It's important not to use cold water or hot water. When you and I take drinks, we might drink something like a Slurpee that's very, very cold. But it's going to warm from the point it hits our mouth, goes down our esophagus, and then gets to our stomach. We're instilling this and it's going directly to his stomach. So we want to make sure that it's not too cold. We could give him sharp stomach pain, cause his stomach to spasm a little bit. So make sure that it's room temperature water. Some institutions insist that you use sterile water for installation into these tubes. So make sure that you've verified if it's okay to use tap water or if you need to use something different. Take the plunger out of my syringe, put it in top of the tube, clamp the tube so that I can measure the amount of water that I'm putting in. Otherwise it runs in too quickly and you can't measure it. There are 30 milliliters of water. I'm transferring hands, but look, I'm still holding the syringe and the tubing. If you need to, you can raise this and it's going to flow in by gravity. The higher you lift it, the quicker it should go in. When that gets to the bottom, it's all the way down the tube. I'll go ahead and kink my tubing, take off my syringe and replace the cap. I'll secure it to my patient's gown. And now you've seen the three ways to check placement. Make sure that you're following your agency's policy and checking placement in the correct manner. Clean up my supplies, remove my gloves, I'll remove my PPE, Place that in the hamper. When a patient has a nasogastric tube, make sure that you're offering oral care at least every two hours. Either they're connected to suction and they're having a problem with their stomach or their lower intestine and they're not taking anything by mouth. Or we're worried that they're aspirating, so we're not letting them have anything by mouth. Either way, their mouth, their mucous membranes are going to become dry, so make sure you're offering that mouth care on a regular basis. Lower the patient and put up the side rail. My final steps are to wash my hands and document the procedure.